Today's guest is a product manager at Kitcaster Podcast Agency. He's a graduate of Colorado State University, where he studied communication, journalism, and real estate programs. Welcome to the show, Tom. How are you doing? Doing great. Thanks for the introduction, Toby. Um, been looking forward to come on this. I think we've had it scheduled for like a month now, so I've been really excited. And um, yeah, here at Kitcaster, we just do a lot of things all things podcasting and we've had a pleasure working with you and your show. So yeah, it's, it's my pleasure to come on your show and talk about anything we want. <laughs> Thank you so much. I've been looking forward to this also, like since the one month ago that we scheduled this. Um, thank you so much for joining me today on this episode of Mirror Talk. I would like to appreciate you also for your awesome work that you do at Kitcaster Podcast Agency. But before, before we talk about Kitcaster, please can you share a little bit about yourself, about your life journey so far, for example? Sure. Yeah. So um, I'm 25 years old. Right now I'm living here in Denver, but I grew up in New Jersey, just outside of New York City. So um, up until I went to college out here in Colorado, um, I was over there on the East Coast, just living, doing my thing. Um, I started really getting into technology and um, entrepreneurship in college. So um, I've started a few companies and um, gained a lot of product managing experience. And that's how I found myself in my position here at Kickcaster, um, which I'm the product manager of the podcast guest list, which you know about, and we'll talk more about that later. But um, yeah. yeah, I, you know, I'm just kind of an adventurous person. I love to do, you know, action sports. Um, I love to create things, photography, uh, videography. I love to write um, really just anything that, you know, gets exciting and, and looks cool. I, I love to share it with people. Um, I have like a photography page on Instagram and I have my companies that I've started, which I think are exciting and new and um, really just bring people, you know, new perspectives and um, just looking to improve other people's lives as well, which is the content that I share and the products mm -hmm. that I create. And yeah, I guess that's kind of what I'm all about. <laughs> yeah, that, that's awesome. I also read, you know, I read that you have always lived your life to, you know make other people happy you live your life on a pursuit to make other people happy to give them joy in their lives so can you explain this to me what's you know what brought this inspiration to you and what do you do on and how do you make other people happy you know you, you mentioned your companies already but what, what's what's is the you know the content of the company that makes other people happy for sure um i i think it's just because you know making other people happy kind of makes me happy and uh I, I love to see somebody get excited about something or learn something new that they hadn't thought about or hadn't seen before. And, um, you know, with my tech companies, they focus on cryptocurrency, which a lot of people are just starting to learn about now and they're getting excited about it. So being able to help in that, um, that shift and that education is something that has been really exciting for me. And um, I love to see people, you know, I love to see when people, you know, realize it and grasp it and, and get what's so good about these like new technologies and things. And then also um, in terms of my like content creation and kind of adventurous lifestyle that I've been living, um, I love to just introduce people to new ways to like have fun and like do cool things like skateboarding, snowboarding, um, you know, surfing, adventure, like climbing hike whatever it is and uh just show people that you know you don't just have to sit around all day and be on the computer or you know play video games like you can go out and do stuff although there's nothing wrong with any of that um mm -hmm. there's so much out there to do and you know i love to share that and i love to um through my photography as well just paint different uh pictures for people to see and um have get people to look at things in a different way like a way that they might not expect like that's one of my favorite types of photography to do it's kind of like a little bit abstract but something that you might see every day but just looking at it from a different angle in a way that is new and exciting yes that, that's very awesome and apart from you know yeah. you're doing photography and you know creating content uh, talking about cryptocurrency also like educating people on that you also do this awesome job at Kitcaster, and which is also one yeah. of the ways you're fulfilling your, your goals which is to you know leave a mark on this world that nobody will frown yeah. about so for, for, listener, for, for listeners out there, what is Kitcaster and what do you do as a product manager at Kitcaster? For sure. So I'll start off with Kitcaster. Um, we're essentially a podcast booking agency. Um, we take top entrepreneurs, funded startup founders, um, CEOs, executives, 
and we place them on qualified podcasts that can help them to spread a message and talk about, you know, their companies, their products, the messages that they want to share um, in a great and effective way that gets their, gets their message across and also helps them to, you know, you know, drive engagement and um, reach new customers and things like that. So we have, we work with a ton of different podcasts, yours, including, you know, we we're always finding new ones and um, you know, the clients that we typically serve have very specific industries that they're a part of, but the great part is there's a podcast about everything. So um, if we have somebody who's talking about an AI uh, chat bot, for example, you know, we have great relationships with a bunch of shows who love to talk about that type of thing. Or if we have somebody who's more of like a health and fitness expert, um, dietitian, you know, we have podcasts in that area. So essentially what we've created is this network of, great podcasts, great shows in all different sort of verticals and industries. Mm -hmm. And we take our clients who are looking to get placed on those shows for exposure and we get them on there. Mm -hmm. um, so that's the main thing that Kickcaster is about. We have two sides to our company right now. It's an agency side, which um, that's when a client will come on and get a specific agent that pitches them to very, you know, specific shows for a campaign. And then we have the podcast guest list side, which I'm the product manager of, and you've had a lot of experience using it before. Mm -hmm. It's essentially a list of different types of guests who are looking to go on to shows and um, podcast hosts, it's free for them to use. They could just hop on there and send an invite to any guests that they like that they think would be great for their show. And um, the platform simply just makes the connection between them and they can schedule a recording whenever they want to. Mm -hmm. That's very, that's very beautiful and very um, awesome, actually. I find it very easy to use and, yeah, it's, you know, creates a lot of connections faster and with less stress. That's awesome. Well done. That's awesome. Yeah, it's great. All of our guests have had such a great time coming on your show. And, um, you know, it's great. You're always right on top of it. When new guests come in, you send out the invites. And um, I think it's a great, you know, first show for them to be on because, you know, we've, we've heard so much good feedback from you. So thanks for using our, uh, our platform. We look forward to working with you and uh, also send any more guests in the future too. <laughs> Thank you so much. So for, yeah. for everyone out there, can you educate us on podcasting? What is the importance of podcasting at this day and age? Definitely. You know, we've seen so much growth in podcasting just over the past year. Um, Kickcaster itself is just under maybe two years old um, or probably about a year and a half old at this point. Um, so we're a generally new company, we're a startup. And um, even since we've started, we've seen podcasting grow like exponentially. And, um, you know, we think that the best way to spread awareness about your brand is through, you know, genuine conversation, like word of mouth marketing. So if somebody comes on a show and um, has, you know, a sophisticated tech product or something that's really specific, um, but they get placed onto podcasts that focus on just those things. Mm -hmm. You know, all the listeners of that podcast are their direct, you know, customer base and the clients that they're looking for. So it's just a great way to make connections to like-minded people and, um, you know, spread messages in a targeted, you know, really effective way. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, we, we've seen so much growth in podcasting in the sense that, um, you know, all these new platforms are popping up for people to publish on. And, um, you know, there's tons of uh, exposure that people are getting through going on these like bigger shows or even more specified shows, right? It doesn't have to be a big giant show for you to have like a great engagement from it. But if it's a show that's, you know, really in line with what you want to speak about or what you're looking to do, um, you know, the engagement is always great. And um, that, you know, we've found a lot of our clients to have a lot of success going on these podcast campaigns, because it's, it's a way for them to not only reach a new audience and spread a message, but a way for them to get a lot of really good content for them to use too, right? Like, if somebody comes onto your show, you know, you, you record their video and you record their audio and everything. So these like CEOs and executives who might be too busy to go and, you know, help their marketing team make content. Mm -hmm. If they could just take an hour out of their week every week and go on one podcast, 
then all of a sudden their marketing team gets an hour of them talking about their product and an hour of video and audio that they can use to repurpose for different content. So that's one thing that we really push on our clients just to tell them to repurpose that content and get the most use out of it. Create blog posts, Instagram posts, um, audiograms, whatever you could think of. It's just a great way for people to get content and exposure at the same time. That's true. I'm talking about, you know, um, developing content. Um, you're a product manager, and I would love to, to learn from your experience. Um, can you share some tips on how to successfully develop your products, which is mar- marketable? Sure. So um, the, the podcast guest list, which I manage, um, is something pretty new that we've been testing out. Um, and we started it off as an invite-only platform. And um, that was just kind of a way for us to get a little bit of feedback and also test some different things out to see what people would be liking. So um, I, I think, I forget how I gave you the invite. I think I, we may have found you on Instagram or something. Uh, I'm not sure, or it may have been through LinkedIn. I don't know, but we, we were sending out emails to like a large amount of hosts yeah. at once mm-hmm. and um, uh, basically inviting them in saying, hey, we have this guest list. Um, you know, come and check it out. And mm-hmm. we we created that little kind of private community for us to one, you know, see what was working for them and what wasn't working for them. And two, to, um, you know, try to create a community of hosts and guests that we knew would be reliable, you know, sending invites, um, showing up to recordings, not blowing people off, everything like that. Mm-hmm. Because we figured that the less kind of, uh, the less missed recordings we have, the less issues we had, the more we could figure out what was successful about the platform and what wasn't. Yes. So um, a lot of testing, that's that's kind of how you start off managing a new product, see what people like and don't like. And then um, ultimately we kind of started refining the platform and now we're getting ready to open it up. to the. It's still in the private stage right now, um, but anyone could get access if they were to reach out to us through our website. Um, but yeah, we're getting ready to open it up publicly soon and, um, you know, put some real like marketing behind it and then ultimately start testing through our marketing team, you know, what kind of messaging is driving um, usage to the platform and things like that. Um, so yeah, I guess to answer your question, how to how to start a new product, what product management's like, it's it's a lot of testing, it's a lot of research, figuring out what people like and don't like, and then just a lot of refinement to your product and and seeing how you can make it better. I like that. I like that. I mean, you, you have a yeah. product, you have an idea, you have to test it out, make a lot of research, and then from the research, from the results, you refine your product until it becomes a perfect or not not perfect, but a successful product. Exactly. Like here at KitCaster, you know, we're starting to come up with some new products and things as well. So like, for example, we have a new um, podcast content studio, our creative content studio. And basically what it is, is um, we'll take, say we had a client or somebody who reached out, they went on a podcast interview and they really loved it. Like they just thought it was so great, but they don't really have any idea what to do with the content. Mm. Um, They can come to us and we'll take that podcast recording and we'll turn it into upwards of, you know, 15 to 20 different pieces of content for them. And, you know, you got blog posts, you got Instagram images, videos, audiograms, all those sorts of things. And um, we, we return that back based on whatever podcast recording they want. So as from a product manager's perspective, this is something that we're like just starting brand new. Right. So we're testing it out with like some of our existing clients. Um, you know, we started like maybe the first one that we did was like for free for one of our clients just to test it out and see what they liked about it. So again, we're back to that, you know, creating, testing, and then refining to see what's good about it. Mm-hmm. So um, we're, we're in the very early stages of that. That's one thing that we're doing. Um, and yeah, it's it's been going well and we're just kind of trying to refine our process so that you know, once we have a new idea, we can push that out and create it quickly and more efficiently the next time. So with each new product, we're trying to make our process a little bit better for the next product. That, that sounds very promising and good. And talking about, you know, um, con- um, editing and all that, I know you, you enjoy music production and audio editing. 
Um, yeah. Do you do that for KitCast or you do that privately? Can you tell me about this? Sure. Um, so I do my own music production um, for myself just for fun and, you know, to make songs that I like and enjoy. But also in doing that, um, you know, I gained like a pretty fair amount of audio editing skills. So um, I do edit podcasts as well on the side as like a little side hustle um, to make some extra money. Mm -hmm. But um, right now, Kitcaster, we don't have our podcast up and running at the moment. We kind of um, just have decided to focus a little bit more on, you know, our clients and, you know, bringing success to them, but we're going to be opening up some, some new podcasts pretty soon. We want to have our own like publishing group where we, you know, make new podcasts and, and push them out. Um, so I may be editing more podcasts in the future for KitCast or doing audio, but um, yes. also, you know, I do, I do offer up any music that I make to anyone that I'm working with, if they want to use it for a video or something like that, you know, I'm always okay with that. Cause <laughs> you know, it's, it's nothing serious for me. If I make the music and more people get to hear it, I'm fine with that as well. And how can people, you know, reach out to you to get some music from your, to, you know, for you to work with them to get some, to make some, make some music, for example. Sure. I have a um, SoundCloud where I post like songs that I've made. So I can send you that link and then you can include it in, in whatever you like to, to yeah. post in the bio or whatever. And um, yeah. yeah, that they could reach out to me there or just by my Instagram account, which I'll also give that to you too. And anywhere you can message me about anything that I do, that's fine with me. If you message my photo page about music, I won't be upset. <laughs> <laughs> yes so i'll place this information about your um, instagram and your soundcloud um, page in the show notes for this episode so anyone who's interested could just click on it or copy the link and reach out to tom to get some sure. awesome music from from tom yeah <laughs> thank you yeah I'll, we'll include my kitcaster email in there too if anyone has any additional questions about kitcaster they could send an email too that's one of the easiest ways Yes, yes, I will do that also. Yeah. So I would love to switch from, from podcasting to currency. Like some people at this day and age, everyone is looking into, you know, digital, um, you know, currency, NFTs and, um, you know, um, cryptocurrency. But yep. for, for a layman out there, um, can you educate me on blockchain? What is that? And what is digital currency? What is cryptocurrency? What's it all sure. about? Sure, <laughs> definitely. Okay, so. Yeah, I know that I have kind of a wide range of things that I'm involved in. So if, when we go from podcast into blockchain, it might be a big jump for the listeners. So I'll try to make it um, as, <laughs> as easy to understand as I can. But um, essentially what a blockchain is, is a distributed, a shared database. So let's say um, I had a database on my computer, right? Mm -hmm. If if my computer is the only place that that database is stored, then somebody could hack into my computer and change whatever they want, right? Does that make sense? Yes. But a distributed database, what they say in blockchain distributed ledger, is a database that's spread out across hundreds, thousands, hundreds of thousands of computers all around the world. So with Bitcoin, for example, um, there's got to be, you know, hundreds of thousands of nodes on the network, which means that a node is something that is storing the entire database of Bitcoin, which in a cryptocurrency space, that database holds the transactions, right? So it holds um, everybody's account balances. And, you know, when someone sends a new transaction, it holds the record of that. Um, and in that sense, since it's spread out on all these computers all across the world, it's, it's, basically impossible to hack right because it, it might be easy for somebody to hack one computer but to be able to hack the bitcoin network you'd have to hack hundreds of thousands of computers all around the world and it's just it's virtually impossible so that's that's kind of the the core idea behind what blockchain is this mm -hmm. distributed database of information and whenever a new transaction gets added to bitcoin it gets confirmed off of every node on the network. So everybody has to say, okay, this is real. Or if something, if a fraudulent transaction tries to get pushed through, you know, you have hundreds of thousands of computers coming back, you know, using these complex math problems through a process called mining, which that it's a little bit more advanced, but basically they can say, no, this transaction is fake. This mm -hmm. is not real. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's extremely secure. It's, arguably more secure than the current ways that you know the world's banks do their transactions um so it's 
you know, it's really promising. And there's so many more projects out there besides Bitcoin that are, you know, making, you know, great technological advances and, and transactional technology. And yeah, I think it's, I think it's the way that of the future kind of, so yeah. I, I see no other way for it to go. I mean, it just makes so much sense at this point. So, but who, is, who is it for? And um, is it safe for everyone to, you know, invest in it? And how can one invest into it? Sure. Um, so, you know, I, I'm no financial expert, but um, there's plenty of ways and um, methods for people to invest and um, to make money off of their investment to make capital gains. But, um, you know, it, it depends on which regions you're in, what country, even in the United States, it comes down to what state you're in, you know, which exchanges that you can use to buy cryptocurrencies. Mm. Um, but um, for example, one of the largest uh, exchanges in the United States is Coinbase, which I'm sure maybe you've heard of before. Yeah. Um, and it's it's really simple. You can just hook up your bank account and you know transfer some money onto the platform, and then through the platform, at the exchange, you would buy a cryptocurrency for U.S. dollars using a trading pair. Like either you would buy Bitcoin or Ethereum. You know, there's so many that you can do. Yes. I, I would never really, you know, advise anybody to buy anything in, in particular because I'm no expert and, um, you know, I don't want to give any financial advice, but there's thousands of cryptocurrencies out there and, you know, a fair amount of them are bound to go up in value. And that's just, you know, in my eyes, it's inevitable, but other people may disagree. But, um, you know, I think what we've seen in the past year is it a gigantic rise in the prices of cryptocurrency. And if we look at and compare it to things like the dot-com bubble back in, you know, the nineties, um, it looks very similar and, you know, yeah, maybe bubbles do pop or whatever, but ultimately, you know, the price goes up over the long run. Yeah, that's true. That's very true. Yeah. So, you know, um, a lot of people got to know about cryptocurrency quite late. And um, mm-hmm. so, so in the mind of a lot of people now, or in my mind also, um, in order to, you know, avoid this mistake from happening next time, like how can we stay, you know, current with the latest technology products that are in, are in market? Like how can we know when the next thing is on? And um, how can we know um, which of these products, which of these technology products that is suitable for us, for example? Is there, are there methods to know that? Sure. Um... So I personally don't think that it's too late to get involved in cryptocurrency. I still think we're very early in the game. You know, um, these things have only been around for maybe close to like 15 years at this point, Uh, maybe a little bit longer possibly, but um, I I still think it's very early. And um, what I look for when I'm looking for a new technology or um, token or something like that to invest in is just, you know, all of these products have, or projects, I'm sorry, have, you know, websites and they have teams behind them. You know, these things are real. They're real companies. It's not just like you're sending your money out into the, the ether on the internet and it's just, <laughs> it's going to disappear. Like, although, you know, you got to be careful because there can be scams and things like that. Mm. But, um, you know, I look at it just like anybody would look at a company that they're investing in, in the stock market, you know, Um, there's reports, there's business plans and everything. And what I look for before I invest into a cryptocurrency is a, um, a, an idea or a use case that I think is going to be beneficial in the future. Mm. Um, and you know, there's tons of like different applications, like you were talking about NFTs before, and, um, there's different uh, types of networks or transactional currencies, which is like what Bitcoin is, um, where it's basically just used to send money. Um, there's t- so many different types of products. And what I look for is something that I think will in the long run be useful or just a great, like cool idea that's fun. Um, like Decentraland, for example, is like a super cool, like online virtual world, an ecosystem that like in the future, you know, people are buying virtual property in this. And in, in the future, it's going to be this online, like, 
eco landscape that you can, you know, be a part of and being, and I just think that's a really cool and fun idea. So like, mm-hmm. yeah, I put a, I put a little bit, you know, a couple bucks in there just to see what would happen. And, you know, the price of the coin is just, it's going up steadily. So <laughs> there's, there's so many different, you know, real world use cases. I'll, I'll talk about another one, for example, which mm-hmm. to me is just a great real world use case. And um, like I said, it's not any financial advice, you know, everyone should go look up these things and see what they believe in and think will be a good idea for themselves when they want to pick something to invest in. But um, there's another one called Helium Network. And um, it's essentially a an internet of things network. So the way that it's a little bit different from like Bitcoin and the other things in terms of how it's mined, basically you would buy a little, um, it's almost like a router, or like a hotspot and you plug it in at your house and it creates a network using radio frequencies around your area and um, devices that use the internet of things like uh, for example, I don't know if you guys have these over in Germany, but like uh, the scooters that you can just scan with your phone and, and you could drive around like the yes. city or something. Yes, yes. Yeah, so that's an example of an internet of things device, right? Cause it's just out in the world, mm-hmm. but it's connected to the internet. Um, this helium network is creating a network that, helps devices like that to run. And I think Mm -hmm. in my mind, that's a great use case because we're seeing more and more internet connected devices coming out. And um, they also plan to, um, they also plan to have a 5G network um, come out. So it would basically be a cell phone network that allows you to connect to the internet, um, you know, through a network that's run by the people. It's not run by a big media conglomerate or something like it's, it's actually run by the people. And um, I just think that's so cool and I would love to be a part of it. So, you know, I got involved in that one as well. And I bought one of the, uh, the hotspots so that, well, you have it plugged into your house, you, you're basically earning the currency. So mm-hmm. I'm not investing any actual money into it. It's just, it sits there and it runs on the network and it earns the currency for me. For you. Oh, that's, that's like a source of passive income. Yeah, 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 definitely. And, you know, there's so many new product uh, projects that, you know, people can get involved in to uh, mine and, you know, sure, there is some risk to it. Like the network could, you know, eventually fall off and like people don't start using it and the price of the coin goes down. But ultimately, um, if it's something that you believe in and you think will be good, um, the more people who support it, the more, you know, valuable it is. And yeah. Um, so that, that's just the kind of things that I look for is something that I think could have big support around the world and also something that will just be useful and, you know, make sense to me for the future. Yes. The inspiration behind asking this question is, um, you know, there are a lot of people out there who are looking for ways like or means like this to end passive income or looking for ways to, you know, invest money or get into the latest technology product, for example, but they, they are not exposed to the the information required to get this done. So that's why I, I wanted to like, you know, get from your own pool of knowledge. So I could share, you could share with me and also the rest of the listeners who are eager, you know, to get into this, but don't know how and why on and um, what way to go up um, into get into this kind of technology products. Certainly. Um, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Cause like, you'll never know about um, these new products or projects until, until somebody tells you about it. Mm -hmm. But um, the ways that you can go and seek out new things is just through, you know, the internet, which is at all of our fingertips. Um, (laughs) There's a lot of great databases that are showing all the, when it comes to blockchain and cryptocurrencies, um, there's one called CoinMarketCap and it basically lists, you know, every, every cryptocurrency that's available for you to go and buy on an exchange. And it gives you the information, it gives you the price history, it gives you links to the websites and everything. So I know people who just go on there and they spend hours just reading about new coins, what they're doing and deciding ultimately if they want to, you know, buy some or not. Um, So that's a good way. Um, Also just following like, you know, these influencers and, um, you know, tech experts on, you know, Twitter is a huge information pool, right? Like Twitter, I've found so much new stuff on there. Um, follow those types of people who are getting this information because it's in their best interest to share it, right? Say like, 
Elon Musk, for example, is had invested in Dogecoin. It's in his best interest to write a tweet saying "Go buy Dogecoin" because the price goes up when he does that, and yes. he makes money, right? Mm-hmm. So, yeah. you know, follow these um, influential people who are involved in the space, and then in that in that sense, you'll also find you know smaller, less influential people who also spend a ton of time just doing research. Like it's it's all about finding these new projects through research yeah. and just um, just keeping your eyes open, and you get. A lot of times you just have to actively seek it out. Mm. Like um, w- my one friend who told me about the helium network that I just mentioned before, he was just really looking to find a way to get into mining. So he spent days doing research about everything and ultimately found it. Mm. And um, that's, that's how I learned about it because I heard through my friend. So as, as long as you keep, you know, networking and talking to people, following people who, um, are interested in the same things and are looking to find new new ways to either make money or invest um you should be able to find stuff yeah. and and also uh online forums like reddit and those types <laughs> of things that's yeah. this is the best way like all the newest stuff gets posted on there and spread like wildfire especially if it's good yeah 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 that's right that's very correct and yeah. talking about you're talking about influence and your um, knowledge in music production i'm going to switch back a little bit to something personal and and that yeah. has to do with you know um the influence on entertainment for example music what does it what do you think um entertainment has on us like what kind of influence do you think um entertainment for example music has on us as human beings Sure. Um, well, I think that music is kind of a universal language, right? Like, even if an alien came and landed on Earth, they might be like, what is this? But also, maybe it sounds kind of cool. <laughs> I don't know, maybe not an alien, but um, somebody who doesn't speak my language, for example, if I came to Germany, um, you know, I could go there and maybe not be able to speak to somebody, but I could play some deep house music, which I know they love over there. And mm. I, I think that um, I'd be able to make some friends because yeah. it, it's, it's a, music is a bridge. It's a connection between people. Um, it's, just, it's in a way to express yourself um, other than through language and through words. And obviously we use language and words in music as well through lyrics, but um, just, you know, beats and, um, you know, the sounds have been around for since the beginning of time. Like we see ancient people having created instruments and things like that. Um, I think it's just a universal, a universal means of expression, um, which transcends language barriers. Um, so in terms of how you ask, like, how does music have an influence on people? I think um, it does just that. It, it shows you that there's ways that you can connect to people besides language or besides your common interests. Like say you were interested in, um, I don't know, uh, baseball, but I wasn't, Um, you know, maybe we still like the same type of music and it's just a way to connect to new people and um, build new connections. At least that's how I see it. Yes. Yes. And you as a, as a music producer, do you have like some inspiration or purpose or um, aim why producing music, do you have like an intention, you know, you're trying to uh, um, reach when, when making the music? Sure. I think that um, when I'm making music, the main goal is to just make music that I enjoy mm. and um, the intention and the, uh, the goal is to um, have people or meet people who also enjoy the music that I enjoy to make. Like, people if I make something that somebody likes then I know that I'm probably going to get along with that person because they're into the same thing that I'm into Um, also you know I'm always trying to make new things and um, find a new sound that you know sounds unique and might be new for somebody and um, might make somebody else think of something new Uh, Mm. I think you know that's what music is all about and music production in particular is about just making the kinds of music that you enjoy and sharing it with more people and, you know, hoping that they enjoy it too. Yes. Yeah. But even if people don't enjoy it, it that's yeah. fine. You know, you don't yeah. have to like my music, but you know, I might be more inclined to hang out with the people who do like my music. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You're right. You're right. And this is, this is quite awesome because um, you, you, you are 25, right? 
Yes. And you, you have, you are, you've started a lot of companies already. Um, you finished your bachelor degrees already. You are working yeah. in, in a very awesome um, podcast um, agency. And you, are, you have so much idea, so much um, information about um, cryptocurrency, about other technology products also. This is like a, a kind yeah. of story that anyone who's listening to will be like, oh, wow, oh, this is awesome. With 25, you can do cool. all of these things. So yeah. are, there like, are, there, are there like other life stories that have you know, change your perspective on, t- on things in life or have, you know, you know, motivated you or change your mind about, you know, different aspects of life? Oh, man. Um, hmm. I might need a second to think about that. That's a, that's a big question. I mean, yeah. everything that I've gone through in life has, um, you know, influenced me in some way or another. Mm-hmm. Um, I guess just things that have like, I guess, given a shift for me, um, mm-hmm is just running into, you know, new people out there who are as like-minded as me or involved in something that maybe I hadn't thought about yet. And, um, you know, just, just inspiring me to try new things. Like, um, for example, I had never started a company before, um, my junior year in college. And, um, I went and I studied abroad over in Prague to, just as a way to, you know, mainly try to meet new people. Like, yeah, studying abroad, you know, you go to class and you learn, but everybody knows that it's more about just learning new things culture-wise, meeting new people. So um, yes. I, I went by myself. I didn't, you know, want to bring anybody from that I knew from school already. So I just wanted to throw myself into a completely new place. And um, in doing that, I met um, a friend of mine, Christoph, who ultimately introduced me to our other business partner, Parker. And, you know, we realized that we're a group of like-minded people who want to start companies, who want to build technology that, you know, helps people, makes people's lives better. Um, Hmm. So that's when we started working together. They both, Christoph and Parker already had been working on a project called Fraps, which was the first um, startup that I was involved in. And then um, ultimately, you know, we just started coming up with new things. And since then, we must have worked on four or five different companies by now um, that Mm -hmm. that we've either started or you know had friends who have started and um, you know we've seen success in a couple of those we've been able to you know do some fundraising and it kind of just made me realize like when at that time I was 20 so Mm -hmm. it made me see like you don't have to be some you know already um, successful, um, powerful person to start a company of your own. Like mm-hmm. I had thought that, um, actually this is a good one. Okay. So I would, before that time in my life, I had always thought, you know, let me go to college and get like a degree and like a stable job that I can save up money and do stuff. And, and then down the line, I'll start making music. I'll start doing the things I enjoy. I'll start making companies. Mm. But then once I ran into these people, um, you know, these guys at age 20 that were very like-minded as me and were already doing, like they were already starting companies, they were already doing what they wanted to do. Yeah. That just like opened up this, you know, this block in my mind that was like, you don't have to be successful already to start something new. Mm. Um, everybody who is successful or, you know, people who have created these like wildly successful companies, they didn't have the craziest resume beforehand, most likely, you know? Um, So that was, that was one big thing that really changed my way of thinking. And now that's transcended into other parts of my life in terms of like travel or wanting to go out and try something new. It's like, why not just do it now? I, I shouldn't wait until later when it's, more safe for me to do it now or like I have more money to fund something Mm. Um, why not just go into like a little bit of debt on a credit card or something to try something right now and (laughs) you know take obviously take that with a grain of salt don't go too far with it but like Mm. for example I got approached a couple weeks ago about going on a trip to San Diego which I've never been there before and um I was like, oh, well, I don't know if I really have the money right now. Like I should save. But then my friend was like, dude, it's like a hundred bucks for a plane ticket. Why not? (laughs) So so I'm going to San Diego now, but yeah, Yeah, yeah. you you know, it's, it's all about just, um, sorry, I don't want to ramble for too long, but like, you know, if you, if you're not doing it now, who knows Mm -hmm. if you'll have the chance to do it later. Mm -hmm. 
Yes, I love that. Yeah. So the best time to start is right now. Right now. Uh, exactly. Yes. If you think if you think it's too late for cryptocurrency, the best time to invest is right now mm. because it's not too late. If you think it's too late for to start a company that you've been thinking of, you know, the best time to start is right now. Oh yes. Yes, that, that's so awesome, Tom. Thank you so much for everything I've, I've been able to learn from you today. I really, really appreciate it. I really appreciate everything I've been able to learn. So for people out there yes. who want to like reach out to you and get across to you, I, I'm going to place your, your email um, in the show notes for this episode and also the link to your SoundCloud in case you want to download your, your music and sure. um, your Instagram page also. I think you have two of them. Yeah. You have two Instagram pages, right? Yeah, I have one that's just like, um, you know, post whatever i'm doing in life and whatever yeah. and then i have one where i specifically post like photography so i can give you anything that you that you want i'll send you all that stuff over and uh yeah anyone can feel free to reach out to me on any of those things you know i don't have a big following or anything there's not a million people reaching out to me so like if you send me a message i'll see it and i'll, I'll respond and we'll you know we'll get to talking about whatever it is you want to learn about yes that's awesome so if, if there's a, a word you would love to tell another 25 year old out there who is, you know, wanting to achieve something in life, what, what would that word be? One word? Oh, no, it's a, or a sentence, anything, uh, anything, uh, any, okay, any, okay, a, piece okay. of, a piece of advice. <laughs> okay. Um, hmm. Well, we already talked about just do it now. So let me just think of something else. Um, yes. If you want to be successful, um, I guess just be open-minded. Like, mm. don't shut down any idea without, you know, fully thinking it through and giving it the light of day. Like, if somebody comes up to you saying, hey, um, I have this idea for, you know, a cool hat that has like a pocket in it at the same time. Don't just right away be like, that sounds dumb. Because then maybe, <laughs> you know, in 10 years, you'll see like on CVS or some crazy, you know, place, these hats with pockets getting sold, you know. Mm. And you know, someone can grab that idea and run with it right now, but <laughs> this is just a random one that I think uh, that I think maybe I heard about in the past, but yeah, um, just keep an open mind and, you know, don't shut anything out. Don't be like the older people who said, you know, oh, um, why would I turn my good hard-earned money into internet currency? There's no point in doing that. But now those people realize that if they had done that 10 years ago, there's definitely a point to doing it, right? Like they yes. would have made, they yes. would have made a lot of money. So mm. keep an open mind. That's a good one. A good one. Thank you so much. That's um, a wonderful point to end this episode. Thank you so much, Tom, for your your time. Thank you so much for everything I've been to learn from you. I really appreciate this. Yes, of course. Thank you, Toby, for all your hard work and the show is great. And keep on doing what you're doing. Awesome. Thank you. <laughs>